Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome to our next episode of the SWE Universe Mode. We are back with our next episode of Adrenaline, and our last standard episode of Adrenaline before we hit, of course, Shabby Mania. And here is our opening match of the evening. It is going to be Neville taking on Matt Seidel. And here we go then. This should be a good one, this one. Two of the best high flyers that SWE has to offer. Neville has had an awful time in Season 2 of SWE. I think he's looking forward to a fresh start on Season 3, to be honest with you. Uh, one of the lowest ranked guys on the Adrenaline roster. Is he bottom? No, he is bottom still, is he? He is... Let's have a quick look. Adrenaline. Uh, singles male roster. Neville is, yep, dead bottom by quite some distance. Um, so, yeah, he needs a bit of help to uh, turn his luck around, I suppose. And a victory here against Matt Seidel would go part of the way, but at the moment he's a good few matches behind anyone. So, yeah, I think on 2K18 we need to uh, give uh, Neville a fresh chance, see what he can do. Uh, but I don't think he's had things too much his way, though, if you look at it, really. He's had some very difficult matches to compete in. Um, but he did embarrass himself a bit at the King of the Cruiserweights being knocked out in the first round to Rich Swan. No offence to Rich Swan, but you'd think the man who calls himself the uh, the King of the Cruiserweights would be able to pull off a victory there, but it wasn't to be the case. Now, Matt Seidel, of course. Where's Matt Seidel on the things? Matt Seidel's actually one of the highest rated. He is currently about fifth in the ratings. Fifth or sixth in the, in the rankings. Uh... So he's done pretty well for himself. And because of that, Matt Seidel is involved in the Cruiserweight Championship match at Shabby Mania. There's going to be Matt Seidel and it is also going to be Jack Evans, of course, who joined this roster not too long ago. Just after the um, just after we had uh, the last pay-per-view, the pay-per-view four, I think it was. A bit of trading happened between myself and PJ Toby that brought Worldwide Underground to light here on Adrenaline. Um, so yeah, he's going to be uh, Seidel and Jack Evans taking on Will Ospreay, of course, for that Cruiserweight Championship in a triple threat match. That's a really interesting one. I like the look of that. I do really like the look of that. Uh, the matches we've got for you here this evening. Uh, we've got Joey Ryan taking on the Intercontinental Champion Dalton Castle one-on-one. -on -one. We have also got uh, Hydra's Ultimo Dragon and Akira Tozawa, uh, of course, managed by Tatsumi Fujinami. They'll be taking on the team of Katsuchika Okada and uh, Will Ospreay, of course, the Cruiserweight Champion. We're also going to see Roderick Strong taking on Matt Riddle. And our main event here this evening is going to be Shinsuke Nakamura, the former Adrenaline Champion, taking on Hideo Itami. So a real good show for you here this evening. And uh, Peter Toby's done us a good one here. Of course, it is the last episode of Adrenaline before Shabby Mania. And the last standard episode of Adrenaline, of course. All we've got left is your two Shabby Mania videos, which, of course, will be... They'll both be uploaded on the same day. Basically, uh, Shabby Mania is going to be a 10-match card, but just for my sanity of editing the video and creating the video and uploading the video, it'll be split into two separate halves. It's probably the same for you watching the video as well. If I upload a three-hour show for, for each brand, it's going to be a bit much, isn't it? So if we upload two uh, videos, they won't be uploaded on the same day within a... Within an hour or so of each other anyway, so it's not going to be a problem. Is Matt Seidel going to win this by... No, Matt Seidel doesn't. Nice one, Seidel. I was a bit worried there that Matt Seidel was going to win this by countout, because I hate the countouts on this game. They really have become a problem for us. Right, so Neville now sending Seidel into the corner. Nice super kick by Neville. Wow, Seidel drops like a sack of spuds. Neville now stamping on the back of the arm of Seidel as well. Neville heading over the top. Springboard 450. And a big boot across the chest of Matt Seidel as well. Slamming him arm first into the mat. Neville now bringing Seidel back up. But Seidel catching Neville with the arm drag. And like I said, if you look on paper, you think that Seidel will probably pick up the victory in this one based on uh, recent results. But you can never tell. That's the wonder of SWE. You've got no idea what's going to happen after time. There's the pin by Neville. One... Ooh, only one count. Yeah, Neville's desperate for this. He needs to build up some momentum. But like I said, I think now, in Neville's opinion, I think, don't think Neville's got a match at Shabby Mania. I don't, no, he hasn't, no. And in fairness, he doesn't deserve one either, does he, really, based on his results. So he hasn't got a match at Shabby Mania. 
Um, so really, this is his last opportunity to prove himself. If he loses here, it's going to be even worse for him. He's going to be even further behind everyone else on uh, on 2K18. So he needs to get the points here just to, just to turn things around for him and hopefully start him on a, a movement towards the right side of the card. Nice shooting standing. Shooting standing. Standing shooting star press by Neville. Now brings Seidel up, dropping an elbow right across the knee. Seidel fighting back with the head as a takedown. And once again, they're fighting on the outside of the ring. And I always feel uncomfortable when they're fighting on the outside of the ring because I don't want a double count out. I've had quite a few of those the last few weeks recording. I don't even know what the referee's up to because I can't see his fingers. I think he's at seven, I think I heard. Go on, throw him into the ring. Seidel does show Neville into the ring. And follows it as well, so we don't get a double counter again. Good. They leave it too close. I think on WWE 2K16, that was the last one, wasn't it? They got to... Um... Oh, never. Why are you sending him outside the ring again, for God's sake? I hope you are going to lose if you carry on with this crap. Just stay in the bloody ring. The thing is, that DDT on the apron, I believe that takes a finisher maneuver. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it does. Uh, which means that he could have gone for the red arrow and he's gone for that instead. See, it's simple mistakes, simple uh, judgment errors like that which have cost Neville big points in this universe mode so far. Neville now taking Matt Seidel down. Now Neville heading up top. I might have been wrong about the red arrow. No, I wasn't. As Neville willing Seidel back up to his feet. And shooting star press on Seidel. Of course, that's his own finisher manoeuvre. One... Two. And no, Seidel kicked out. Neville being a bit cocky there, trying to get Seidel to tap out to his... Uh, or to, uh, get pinned to his own finisher manoeuvre. Which would have been embarrassing for him, really. You don't want to get knocked out to your own, uh, own manoeuvre, do you, really? Seidel sending Neville into the turnbuckle. Side down. Now, what's he looking for here? Joins Neville up top. Standing Spanish fly from the top rope. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. But come on, Side you've got to take advantage of the situation. And he didn't. He was taunting up on the, on the middle ropes and he got completely caught out. Neville now reverse Rana on Matt Seidel. But now Neville's done the same thing. Neville's up on the uh, on the middle rope taunting when potentially he should be paying attention to what's going on here. But it's worked out for him okay, I suppose. Now Neville heads up top. Red arrow, there it is. Neville with a pin. Is this his big turnaround moment? One, two... And free it is. Neville bigs up the victory. He was desperate for that. This could be his big turnaround moment now. Wow. How important is that win for Neville? This match, if he'd lost this, would have put him further and further and further behind to the point where it would be very, very difficult for him to catch up at all, let alone get himself a championship match. And there was a Spanish fly and the reverse Rana. And the reverse of the Rana laid about perfectly for that red arrow. And Neville does get the pin for the one, the two, and the three count. So Neville, it's a bit late to do anything really now, isn't it? But he's got himself some points. He would desperately need those points. That's going to hopefully improve his standing moving into 2K18. Of course, all your ranking points do move into 2K18 with you. Uh, and that's going to be something we'll have to take into account when we do the draft as well, is how many ranking points somebody has. But I don't know, I still feel like I could take Neville to Octane. I'd be happy with Neville on Octane. We could recreate Neville versus Finn Balor. That'd be a match. And here is our next match of the evening. It's going to be Joey Ryan getting an opportunity to take on the Intercontinental Champion, Dalton Castle. And here we go. This has been an interesting one, this, because Joey Ryan's got a chance to prove himself now against one of the uh, the big champions here on Adrenaline. I think Peter Toby has given 
Jerry Ryan, a lot of opportunities so far in this universe mode to prove what he can do, and he's not really repaid a lot of those uh, gifts so far, but who knows, a win here this evening could really turn things in his favour. We currently have penciled in for Shabby Mania an intercontinental triple threat match. Dalton Castle defending against both Hideo Itami and Sami Zayn, but you never know, a win here for Jerry Ryan could really force himself into that card. And it wouldn't be completely out of the question for it to happen either, really, would it? Jay Ryan is someone who can pull it out when he needs to, and, uh, well, that's a dodgy, dodgy saying. I suppose when Joe Ryan's involved, pulling out when he needs to, but there you go. You didn't hear that from me. Joe Ryan versus Dalton Castle. Very similar um, personality as well, I suppose, if you look at it that way. So I'm just bagging my fan because my fan stopped working. And I need it to work. Because my laptop overheats very easily, so I've got a USB fan that blows into the side of the laptop the whole time to keep it cool. However, my USB fan has stopped work. It's it's going round like for a second, then stopping for a second. And it's not picking up enough speed or enough uh Yeah. Problem is if if I leave it it overheats too easily. And then my laptop goes off, and then the videos I'm uploading don't go up uploaded. They don't go uploaded. They don't go uploaded, they don't. So here is then your Intercontinental Champion, Dalton Castle. Done really well, actually, in this universe mode. Sort of uh, forced his way into the championship picture and won a match that nobody expected him to win. Uh, of course, triple threat between himself, Kevin Owens, and Kazichika Okada. Nobody expected Castle to come out with a belt. And now he's going to have to defend that belt in another triple threat match. And if he does that as well, that's going to be incredibly impressive. Incredibly impressive. With Sami Zayn and Hideo Itami. Here we go then, Joey Ryan. The man, the myth, the menace. Against Dalton Castle, one on one. The bell goes and we are underway for this indie classic. Uh, Dalton Castle has worked. Uh, well, Dalton Castle mainly Ring of Honor, isn't he? So he, he can work PWG. But I think, off my memory, he's only worked there once. I might be wrong. But I think he might have only worked there once. Um, yeah. Joe Ryan, of course. I'm sure Joe Ryan's a part owner of PWG. I might be wrong, you know. I might be wrong. PWG. Let's have a look. Um, Wikipedia. Uh, founders. Joe Ryan was a founder. Uh, but it's currently owned by Excalibur and Super Dragon. But Joe Ryan was one of the founders. Alongside Disco Machine, Scott Loss, Super Dragon, Top Gun Taller. And... That's everyone, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You look at the, like I say here, the, the first year of PWG saw AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, CM Punk, Homicide, Chris Hero, Brian Kendrick and Colt Cabana. Um, and Kazarian was on the debut show. That's a bit of useless trivia for you. PWG was the first company to put AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. That was the first time the two had ever competed against each other. Oh, no, hang on a minute. No, there we go. It was supposed to be Styles versus Joe, which would be a first-time match. Big Frog Splash there by Joe Ryan. It was supposed to be a first-time match between Styles and Joe in 2003. However, Joe was injured in a match against Paul London and replaced by Frankie Kazarian, so it ended up being AJ Styles versus Kazarian. As uh, Joe Ryan locking in the chicken wing here, if he can make the Intercontinental Champion tap out, that's going to give PJ Toby some serious, serious questions to answer. But Dalton Castle breaking free with the stamp on the toe of Joe Ryan, then went for the Ace Crusher, but Ryan forces him away. Castle now catching Ryan, sends him into the ropes. 
Into a German suplex. A nice slow German to let Ryan think about it while he's midair. Carson now stamping on the gut of Joey Ryan and now wrenching back at the arm as well. Just trying to slow proceedings down and keeping Ryan grounded for a bit. But Ryan fighting back with that forearm now. Joey Ryan into a Kimura lock as well. Joey Ryan locking all the submissions here. And Dalton Castle's got to think about this because he does not want to go into Shabby Mania in a few days' time with an injury. So these submission holds could take their toll mentally on Dalton Castle. Eventually he could tap out just for the fear of walking into that Shabby Mania match with an injury. Another German suplex there by Dalton Castle, though, on Joey Ryan. Then just spanking himself in Joey Ryan's general vicinity. Okay. Gonna float your boat. Dalton now bringing Joey Ryan up. Couple of shoulder blocks. Ducking the clothesline into that front slam. Harnessing the spirit of the five moves of doom. Dalton bringing... Ryan back up another big German suplex this time. Bridges for the pin. One, two, and no, it's only a two. Joey Ryan trying to get the uh, sorry Dalton Castle trying to get the victory with that German suplex. He's been taking Joey Ryan to Suplex City in this one, hasn't he? Really? Oh, nice. I don't even know what that's called, but it was a very nice maneuver, and that should finish off Joey Ryan there. Really, there's the pin by Dalton Castle. One. Two and three. No. Castle can't believe it. He thought that was a free count. I thought it was a free count. I saw the ref's hand hit the mat three times before Ryan's shoulder lifted off. But referee's convinced that's the way. Jackknife powerbomb there by Dalton Castle. Now heading up top. Big elbow drop as well. Right into the heart of Joe Ryan. Running double axe handle. Knee strike right in the face by Ryan and by Dalton Castle. Ryan's busted open. Straight into that exposed turnbuckle pad, which Ryan took off himself. And there's the pin once again. Dalton Castle, since hitting that big maneuver, has demolished Joey Ryan, but still can't keep him down for the free. As Castle now raining the elbows right into the, the chest and the trapezius of Joey Ryan. Now lock in that chin lock. Oh, just wrenching the neck of Ryan. Just keeping him grounded for as long as he can while taking a bit of a rest himself because he's put a lot of offense in. Reverse dragon sleeper. Is Ryan going to tap out? No, he doesn't. Of course, Joe Ryan, this is his last scheduled appearance in SWE as well. So, well, I keep saying that, but it's not technically, is it? Because... Um, we do have the Rumble still coming up for you after after Shabby Mania. We've got the Rumbles to see who's going to stay on their roster. So there's still a little bit of time left. We still will probably see Joe Ryan again. But he knows if he can win this match, he might just be able to squeeze himself a place in Shabby Mania as well. Once again, Dalton Castle stalking. Joe Ryan slams him face first once again. And surely this time, Ryan's not going to get up from this one. There's the pin by Dalton Castle. One, two, and three. What? Joey Ryan. Joey freaking Ryan. What has got into you today, my friend? He said he's desperate for that match at Shabby Mania. And he locked in the chicken wing again, isn't he? Yeah, he does. He locks in the chicken wing again. I said earlier, Dalton Castle's got to think about his situation here. He doesn't want to go into Shabby Mania with an injury. But he does also want to go into Shabby Mania on a loss as well, does he? And he breaks free. Stamping on the toe of Ryan before elbowing in the chest as well. Sends him into that turnbuckle again, that exposed turnbuckle. Dalton Carson, I'll twist in the head of Joey Ryan into a running axe handle, but Joey's avoided it. Joey into a neck breaker. Joey back up on the middle rope to taunt, but he needs to take advantage. He needs to finish Dalton off if he has the enough in him, but Dalton catching Joey Ryan there with the belly to belly suplex.
Jerry fighting back. A boot in the shin. Right hand to the side of the face of Dalton. Now has him up on his shoulders. Now looking for a torture rack. Spins it into a power bomb. Holds it for the pin. One. Two. Oh, and Dalton Castle kicked out. Wow, I'll tell you what, this is quickly becoming a very, very good match. This could end up being on our best match playlist, this one, couldn't it? Jay Ryan now dropping a boot in the gut of Dalton Castle. And now dropping an elbow right across the knee as well. Again, dropping the elbow across the knee. And like I said, Dalton Castle does not want to go into Shabby Mania holding any injuries. So he's going to have to be careful here. The longer this match goes on, the more in trouble he's going to be. As once again, Joey Ryan locks in that chicken wing for the third time in the match. And is it going to be enough to take Dalton Castle down this time? Dalton's got a tap this time. He does not want to take an injury. Can he break free from this? He does break free. My word. But I see him holding his shoulder there straight after. Damage might have been done here by Joey Ryan. Clothesline to the back there by Dalton in the turnbuckle. Brings Ryan back up to his feet. German suplex bridges with a pin. One. Two. And no again. Joey Ryan kicked out. What is going on here? How is this even happening? Dalton now dropping a boot. Right in the back of the hamstring of Dre Ryan. And if he can land this spinning front slam once again, then I would imagine that Joey's got to stay down. There it is. Castle drops into the pin. One. Two. Oh my God, really? What is up with this freaking game? How on earth has Dalton Castle survived three chicken wings? How on earth has Joey Ryan kicked out of three of Dalton Castle's finisher manoeuvres? What is going on? Joey Ryan now. German suplex of his own. Bridges for the pin. One. Two. Oh my god, Joey's done it. Out on nowhere. Joey Ryan has defeated the Intercontinental Champion here on Adrenaline. In what is quite possibly one of the best singles matches we've seen so far in this game. And that has got to make PJ Toby think about the Intercontinental Championship match at Shabby Mania for me. Well, if it was my brand, I'd be adding Joey Ryan to that match and making it a four-way. But, of course, it's PJ Toby's decision on what he wants to do. It's a risky one because, um, like I said, we don't, know, uh, we don't know who's going to be available early on to download in the game. So, if Joey Ryan gets the championship win at Shabby Mania... That could be iffy because, as I've said before, if the person is not available on a core until or by the first, maybe second pay-per-view, depending on uh, on how far in the pay-per-views are, then they will have to vacate the championship. But Joey Ryan picks up a big victory here, defeating the Intercontinental Champion, which is worth some good ranking points for him as well. And that could have just saved him a place. Or grant him a place, should I say, at Shabby Mania. Let's see what PJ Toby's got planned. And here is our next match of the evening then. A little bit of tag team action as Hydra's Ultimo Dragon and Akira Tozawa take on Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada. And here we go then. Interesting one, this. Of course, since Hydra's been around... They've been pretty dominant, really. Um, Okada did manage to get himself a bit of retribution, though, at Shabby not Shabana, at the last pay per view, Unbreakable, when he faced off against the newest member of Hydra, of course, Katsura Shibata, who is going to be involved in a match alongside Okada at Shabby Mania. Alongside, of course, Shinsuke Nakamura as well. Got a big Japanese freeway for you. Okada, Nakamura, Shibata, that is going to be awesome. I'm looking at it now. It's going to be really good. We've also got a triple... Uh, a six, triple? We've got a six-man tag match for you as well at um, Shabby Mania. We're going to see Okira Tozawa, Ultimo Dragon, and Big Van Vader. And they are going to be taking on... Kurt Angle and American Alpha. So 
So we've got some really good matches for you actually at Chevy Mania, including a big Cruiserweight Fatal 4-Way as well. We've got a um, Tag Team Championship match. We've got the Cruiserweight Championship match I announced earlier. Women's match between Alexa Bliss and Paige. War Machine's going to take on DIY. Adam Cole versus Roderick Strong. And of course the Adrenaline Championship match is going to be AJ Styles defending his belt against both Bobby Roode and Kevin Owens in a triple threat match. Adrenaline's Shabby Mania is looking very, very good. And it'll be interesting when it comes along to see who wins all the championships and who is guaranteed a spot on Adrenaline for 2K18. And of course, PJ Toby had a massive advantage on the draft for Adrenaline. He got five picks before I got to pick anybody because I had champions on my brands. So this time it's not going to be as easy for him and he's going to have to work for it. I'm not going to let him have anything easy on this new draft. And I feel like I'm going to... I've come into this, I'm going to come into this new draft, the new one we're going to do. I'm going to come into it with a plan. I'm going to have a plan of what I want in the order that I want them. And it's going to be much better for me, I think. I think I'm going to have a bit better, better of a idea of where my roster's going beforehand. Here comes Okada then. As you can see, making his way down. And looks like he's ready for action as well. He looks really ready for action here. And of course his friend Will Ospreay. Uh, Will Ospreay is part of the Chaos Formation over in New Japan, which is currently led by Kazuchika Okada. A lot of the stables in New Japan are quite loose, aren't they? I think, apart from maybe LIG, um, they're quite loose. They're, they're aligned together, but not necessarily... I don't know, it's a weird way. It's not like stables just in the WWE where they're always like, with each other constantly. I think the stables in New Japan are more based for... Um, more base for when you've got, uh, like, Fatal... When they do, like, eight-man tag matches, they do a lot of big matches, don't they? Because they have a lot of shows in New Japan, a lot of house shows and that. They do a lot of eight-man tags and that sort of stuff. And that's a way to utilise a lot of the stables. So they have them knocking around like that because it makes it easier for them to, to explain the eight-man tag matches. But it's also a nice way of not overworking the talent as well, which is a good thing. Maybe that's what the WWE should do is consider bringing in a trio uh, tag team title. Maybe, I don't know how it would work. Would be cross branded or what, but I feel like it would make sense to bring in a trios championship because the trios champion. If you don't know a little bit of history on uh, on Mexican wrestling here, the trios championship was brought in to AAA because their roster was far too big. I think there might have been some. This is a bit I'm a bit sketchy on. They may have merged with another company at some point, and they end up with such a humongous roster, and they were trying to figure out how they can actually use these people. So they thought, well, a good thing to do is to utilize um, utilize six men in one match by having a trios championship. And that's uh, sort of how that was born. And that's the same sort of thing with WWE. At the moment, you've got quite a few trios knocking around, if you look at it. You've got the Miztourage. You've got... Um, that's one. Uh, you've got the New Day. You did have AJ Styles in the club, of course, at one point as well. So there is trios you could bring in. You've got uh, Titus Worldwide as a trio as well. There's lots of trios you could bring in and utilise in this sort of championship situation. So it wouldn't be completely out of the question to do it. To be honest with you, but you know, it is the way it is. Um, and again, you could just make random trios up. If you look at what Lucha Underground did with their trios, they just they weren't even established teams before they came together. Apart from um, apart from Worldwide Underground, of course, the rest of them weren't really teams before they came together. They were sort of a uh, they were sort of loose, weren't they? Loose is that the right word? Loose. It's a bit of a dodgy word, isn't it? Really. Big flapjack there, then by a uh, uh, Kazuchika Okada. Dropping Ultima Dragon face first. And Okada really pushing this one. He wants retribution against all the members of Hydra. Of course, Okada's really struggled in this universe mode. Because Hydra have just had a hold of him now for... Oh. The FIFA 18 demo has been installed. That's useful. Um, <laughs> FIFA... Uh, FIFA? The game comes out in a couple of days. I don't know why I've got the... Uh, it comes out tomorrow, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it comes out tomorrow. I don't know why I've got the demo now, though. But... Yeah, Okada's uh, universe mode has been sort of scuppered by this whole... Hydra thing. He's not had an opportunity to really 
push himself forward and try and go for a belt or anything like that. He went for a belt early on, um, didn't really get the luck. Went for the IC Championship, didn't really get any luck. And it's just uh, he's just been caught up in this whole thing now. He's been caught up defending himself and trying to get retribution for the actions of Hydra. Trying to understand why they're focused on him as well. Osprey sending Dragon into the corner, but now, of course, security is ours, the illegal man. And Osprey catching him in that tornado. Head scissors. I've got the hiccups. That's useful, isn't it? Osprey now jumping, booting the arm of Akira Tozawa. Over the top he goes into a springboard shooting. Star press, beautiful. Absolute spot on landing as well. Nice butterfly suplex as well. I just stamped on the back of that arm. Just trying to weaken the arms of Tozawa. Standing corks for a moonsault as well. And I think Will Ospreay someone that... The thing is, he could end up on this roster anyway, couldn't he? We're based on, um, based on, of course, he's the Cruiserweight Champion. If he holds his Cruiserweight Championship at Shabby Mania, then, of course, Will Ospreay will stay on this brand. If he doesn't, then there's going to be a fight between myself and PJ. Oh, look at that. Looks like uh, Osprey was going for the Salida del Sol. And Akira Tozawa caught him on the shoulder and hit him with a power slam instead. And Tozawa now dropping a knee right across the face of Osprey. Akira Tozawa up on the middle rope, dropping a senton. And Tozawa really doing well here. Really has turned it around. Tozawa bringing Osprey back up. Osprey fighting back with a forearm in the face. And a drop kick to the knee. A boot in the gut. And Osprey looking for the flip powerbomb. Osprey taunting him. He needs to be careful here, Osprey. And that's the thing, they do this a lot in this game. They they try and taunt a bit too early in and they get caught out. And this is the problem that happens. You get caught out and you get done over. Figure four leg lock there, locked in. But of course he breaks free, Osprey. Tozawa taking out a carder as well. Now Tozawa getting right in the face of Osprey, catching the forearm, but Osprey gets him back with a jawbreaker. And they eat defeat as well. Osprey really uh, doing well here now. He really seems to be on top of things. The ultimate dragon now catching. Referee, you've got to you've got to get the legal man. There we go, he has. He's got the illegal man out the ring now. Ultimate dragon fighting back with the boot in the gut. Now taking Osprey up. Letting him think about it before dropping him in the brain buster. Ultimo now locking in that arm breaker. Oh, really wrenching that back, but Osprey managed to roll it through just as well, really. And Osprey rolling through. Ultimo, this is such a back and forth match, this one. Really back and forth. I can't even tell who's on top of things at the moment. Karana by, Os uh, by Ultimo taking Osprey down. Ultimo bringing Osprey back up. It's such back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, man, isn't it? Running Liger Bomb by Ultimo Dragon on Will Osprey. Osprey taking Dragon down with the arm drag. Went for the boot across the chest, but Ultimo Dragon rolled out the way and caught Osprey with a running, spinning heel kick. Osprey fighting. Ultimo away. But again, you need to concentrate on your opponent, Osprey. I need to bring in Okada, maybe. He's a fresh man now. He's not been uh, involved in the match for quite some time. As Osprey now, sunset flip bomb. There's the pin. One, two. Okada completely missed. That's what they're going to have to really work on, 2K and Ukes. Is this tag team thing where these people come across the ring to try and block off for people and they completely miss them or they. 
have a really run a really weird um path finding it just it goes really off like if a card had caught uh tozawa there that would have been great but he didn't he completely missed him with a running drop kick it just looks a bit stupid doesn't it in the end arm breaker there by osprey on Ultima Dragon now into the Horikarana. Dropping a boot on. Ultima now wrenching back with the Dragon Sleeper. Will there be enough to make Ultima Dragon tap out here? No, Dragon fighting back with the two knees right in the face of Osprey and Dragon catching him. Oh, lovely running Horikarana. Ultima Dragon taking Osprey up. Looking for a tomb stone power driver and hits it as well. Oh, but Osprey fight. Man, I say it's just such a back and forth match. This one, standing Spanish fly. I tell you what, I want to see more of Ultimo Dragon versus Will Osprey one on one. This is essentially what this match has been most of it, isn't it? Really. Osprey springboard ace crusher. There's the pin once again. Oh, well, let's see. Tatsumi Fujinami has the referee's attention here. And that was a complete mess. I don't know what happened there, but it worked out well for Osprey, I suppose. Referee trying to get Akira Tozawa back out the ring. Now Ultimo taking Osprey back up again for another running like a bomb. Such a back and forth here. One, two. And there we go. Tozawa's uh, pathfinding in the background there was awful. And that allowed Akada to get across and break it up. Ultimo now brings Tozawa into the ring. Clubbing blow against the back and another one as well. Tozawa bringing Osprey up into a fisherman's suplex. Lovely move there as well. Springboard splash to the back. Tozawa dropping a boot right in the arm of... Will Ospreay as well. Bringing Osprey up. Gets on the back looking for a straight jacket. German one, two, but it's right in front of Okada who breaks it up. And you see there just uh, Tozawa doing nothing. Now Tozawa taunting. This is really weird AI. I don't know what's going on with the game. They just don't seem to want to take advantage of the situation. You'd think they'd have uh, knowledge that they're in a really good position. They want to try and push it, wouldn't you? But Osprey now. Springboard Ace Crusher once again, this time on Akira Tozawa. Osprey with a pin. One, two. Oh, only a two count. Osprey front chance. We now bring in. Tozawa against the ropes. Osprey doesn't seem to have any of her choice of manoeuvres here. Ace Crusher once again. Again with a pin. One. No, again. Tatsumi Fujinami distracting the referee as Akada came across and took Ultima off the ropes. Inverted 450 by Osprey. And surely that's going to be enough. The referee's ejecting Tatsumi Fujinami from ringside, but that allows Akira Tozawa to get back up. Osprey flips out the back with the out of the German and now brings in Okada. Ultima is still down the outside, just slowly stirring. Oh, what a DDT by Okada on Akira Tozawa. Okada rolls him over for the pin. One, two, and no, only a two count. Tozawa kicked out. So Okada is desperate for this retribution here. Tozawa though, lock it in. The butterfly suplex. Now Tozawa showing his his his, uh, his pleasedness, pleasure. That's the one. Right? Where do I get pleasedness from? His pleasure in getting back in control of the match. That didn't last very long, did it really? Tozawa gets taken up by Akada. Into the Tomb Stone Pile Driver.
And Khan doesn't go for the pin. He continues on with the elbow. You'd think he'd go for the pin, wouldn't you? Right. Maybe looking for a Rainmaker. There it is. Big Rainmaker clothesline by Okada. On to Zawa. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And the retribution story is complete for Okada. Big victory here for him. Taking on the team of Hydra and coming out on top. And it means Okada can get some more points because, of course, he has struggled uh, ranking points-wise in this universe mode. He's really struggled. He's not done too well. He's not been able to pick up a lot of form. I feel like a fresh start for him in 2K18 is going to be good for him as well, just like Neville we saw earlier on. Oh, it's been quite a long episode so far, hasn't it, considering that we've still got two matches left for you. And I'm at an hour already. Of course, I cut quite a lot of the loading screens out for you guys. It'll be a bit easier for you, but it's going to be quite a long episode here tonight. Standing Spanish fly by Osprey. Lovely move. And there was a Rainmaker to finish it off. And here is the terrible AI that I keep going on about. Look at this. Look, there's the pin by Okada. And Ultimo, instead of coming to block it, he decides he's going to shout at that person in the front row. And then that with, with Osprey going straight for his body as well. That frustrates me. I don't know what it is. It's a weird one, isn't it? But there we go. There's the win. Okada and Osprey victorious over Hydra. And there's the handshake. These two guys, like I said, know each other very well. Part of the same stable in New Japan. Of course, they've both got their own streams here in Adrenaline. Will Ospreay, your current Cruiserweight champion. And Okada, of course, is trying to get himself back on track after being sidelined with this whole Hydra thing for the last couple of months. And here is our next match. Then it is going to be Roderick Strong taking on Matt Riddle. And here we go. I'm looking forward to this one as well. Really is a uh, an interesting match. Roderick Strong, who, like I said earlier on, will be facing off against Adam Cole at Shabby Mania. But tonight, he's got Matt Riddle in front of him. Matt Riddle's done pretty well in this universe. Mode. One of the highest rated guys on Adrenaline, actually. Because of a victory in a six-man battle royal. Not a while. Not too long ago, of course, where he won the, the spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And now uh, Riddle has a chance to continue on here and push forward. And Roderick Strong, like I said, he wants to continue building some momentum moving forward to that match against Adam Cole, because that's a big one, that is. That is a real big one, that is. That could make or break, well, not make or break the careers as such, but it can give a, a massive amount of ranking points to really help you into 2K18. Adam Cole, of course, has not done too well so far. Lost his place on Adrenaline, uh, let's suppose on Octane, sorry, with that fight against Marty Skull at Dead Man's Boots. Then debuted here on Adrenaline. Getting himself straight involved in the championship picture which, of course, he lost in that match as well. Uh, Adam Cole has lost both his matches since joining Adrenaline, so he really needs to turn things around at Shabby Mania. And Roderick Strong, somebody who we're going to have on the game properly for the first time on 2K18, so it'd be pretty good for him to be able to push forward and build up some momentum and see what he can do in the long term. And Matt Riddle here, someone who I think, will, again, will definitely be involved in 2K18. And just in what effect is going to be the question. He's got some monster eyebrows, hasn't he? I don't. Know, I can never tell if this um, this Matt Riddle's good or not. I think it's his attire is pretty good. I think. I think there's some people whose faces look very generic, and I think Riddle's face is one of those. It looks very generic, and I don't quite know why it is the way it is. It might get better. Don't get me wrong. But I'd, I'd be interested to see how good the cores are in 2K18 as well, of course, was the, as the um, the creation suite improves and so forth, it does get better and better. So chances are we might have some better cores next year. But of course, with a lot of people we don't need anymore either. Like Roderick Strong, like Bobby Roode, like Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, just name a few that are all going to be on the game straight off the bat. Mickey James, uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, Ember Moon. Some real uh, good ones, actually. And I feel like we're going to use a lot of the... Um, a lot of the... The... Uh, whatchamacallin' people as well. 
Where is it? May Young Classic, that's it. Yeah, a lot of the May Young Classic people I think we'll use as well. Uh, if we can get decent cores. I should imagine we will be able to get cores pretty early on for them, so it'd be pretty cool. So the question in hand here is what happens between these two. Matt Riddle, at the moment, this is scheduled to be his last appearance um, on SWE. Uh, well, it, he's not booked for Shelby Main is what I say, of course. He's probably going to be involved in that 30-man rumble, isn't he? Matt Riddle now taking Roderick Strong in, face first into the mat. Hook in the arm and oh, wrenching it back as well. Of course, Matt Riddle comes from a MMA background. So he does like to utilise these finisher manoeuvres. These uh, submission manoeuvres as well. That's what I meant to say the first time, but I bugged it up. Did you notice? Yeah, he likes to utilise these uh, submission holds. And, of course, work on the arm and so forth is only going to help that if he locks in another armbar later on in the match. But he's got to combine with someone who is well-nowned. What's, what's happened with my words? What's happened to words? They no longer work for me. Matt Riddle's taken on someone who is well-renowned for his strong style, style moves, such as his backbreakers. Of course, Roderick Strong is known. Well, he was known as the king of the backbreaker. It's not something that WWE have hinted towards. He's not using that many backbreakers now, is he? He used to use tons when he's back in TNA. Back in the early days. He still has quite a few big backbreaker moves, I suppose, but not as much as he used to. He used to like base a lot of his moveset around his backbreakers, didn't he? Because he was, like I said, the king of the backbreakers. Strong now taking Matt Riddle up onto his shoulders into it. There we go. <laughs> Just case in point. There's the backbreaker. Roddy again up with a big gut buster. And follows it up with a running single boot right to the side of the face of Matt Riddle. That could be game, set, match, but it looks like Roderick Strong still got more to go. Up into the suplex backbreaker. The first time I saw that move, I was absolutely amazed. I saw it in a, a, a PWG event. Oh, only a two count. Wow, how on earth has Matt Riddle kicked out of that? What is going on here this evening? Everyone's kicking out of everything this evening. They think it's Shabby Mania already. Forearm to the face there by Riddle. On Roderick Strong. Riddle taking Strong up into a brain buster. Riddle bringing Strong back up. The Strong fighting back with a jawbreaker. And a running knee strike. And that's busted Matt Riddle open that knee strike. Strong boot in the back of Riddle. Strong now bringing Riddle back up to his feet. Into a butterfly powerbomb. And there we go, that's enough. Roderick Strong picks up the victory. It took a little bit of time to keep Matt Riddle down, but Roderick Strong, great win for him. And that is going to give him the momentum he needs to move into Shabby Mania when he faces off against Adam Cole. Probably one of his biggest tests so far in this universe mode. And it was a good way to end it, actually, that butterfly powerbomb. Really utilising uh, different parts of his moveset. He'd used a lot of his own stuff. He'd used his finish manoeuvres, his signatures, all that sort of stuff. And he, he had to dig down somewhere... To find something to catch Matt Riddle out. And that butterfly powerbomb was that. So good win here for Roderick Strong then. Earning some good ranking points. And also earning some all important momentum. Moving forward to that match against Adam Cole at Shabby Mania. And now it's time then for our main event of the evening. Hideo Itami takes on the former Adrenaline Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. And it's lovely because there is both on the game, so there's no majorly long cutscene. Cutscene? Loading screen. I, I need to, I just can't. What is wrong with me? I can't talk anymore. I can't say the right words. It's like, I know in my head what I want to say, but it comes out completely wrong words. God knows. Right. Hideo Itami is involved in our Intercontinental Championship triple threat at the moment, but could become a fatal four way. 
depending on PJ Tovey's decision on the Dre Ryan situation. Um, and of course, uh, as we announced earlier on as well, Nakamura will be involved in a triple threat match alongside Okada and Shibata at Shabby Mania. So it's looking pretty good, actually. And this match is going to be important for both these guys. Again, just like the last match, building up momentum and uh, getting a victory over somebody quite strong as well to help them out. Because that's, that's the big thing. Of course, Hideo Itami, this is massive for him. He has yet to hold a championship in SWE. And he gets his first opportunity, I think, actually, at Shabby Mania. I don't think he held the belt beforehand. I don't think he's had an opportunity to hold a belt beforehand, should I say, sorry. And Nakamura, of course, the former... Let me get this right. He was the former United States champion twice over on Throwdown. And now the former Adrenaline champion as well, so... Nakamura held both belts. We're still yet to have anybody who is a two as a champion, a main event champion of two separate brands, are we? Like people have held belts in different levels, like uh, like I said, Nakamura held an upper mid card and a main event, but nobody yet has held the main event championship in two separate brands. I would imagine it's definitely going to happen in season three, though. It would definitely happen on season three because I feel like there's going to be a lot more people being moved around. There's more opportunities, isn't it? More main events, and uh, I feel like we're going to... I Myself, I've got different ideas for my draft, so I'm going to end up with probably a lot of different people to what I got this year. Plus, Nakam, uh, plus Peter Toby is not going to get his free five picks at the beginning, so he's not going to be able to get the likes of Okada, because his first five picks, wasn't it? His first five picks were... I'm going to go off the top of my head here. It was Nakamura, Okada, Osprey, Ricochet, and... Samoa Joe? No, I've got Samoa Joe. Yeah, I can't remember who it was now. It was definitely those four. Definitely those four. And it might have been Kevin Owens. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good one. It, it's not going to get like this time, so we should be able to spread things out a bit more. It's going to be different because depending on who the champions are and who's aligned then it still might be a problem because, for example, on Octane, if things go a certain way at Shabby Mania, then I'm guaranteed to keep both uh, Bullet Club, which is five members, and British Strong Club, which is three members. Then you've got the tag... That's the tag team champions and the European champion. Then you've got the main event champion, whoever that's going to end up being. And then you'll have the um, women's champion as well. So I'll end up with quite a few people on my roster to start off with, which means I won't get a pick until everybody else is caught up. So it could be an issue. So here we go then. Nakamura versus Hideo. Red versus Yellow by the looks of it. And I can't wait for this match to actually happen. It'll happen at some point when it in, uh, in WWE. It must do. Nakamura stamping on the back and stamping on the arm now of Hideo Itami as well. And a big elbow now across the forehead of Hideo Itami and then booting right in the lower regions there. I don't think that was quite the gut. It was a little bit lower than the gut. Big German suplex. Nakamura taking early control of this match. Hideo struggling to get any anything back in this match at all, really. Hideo now stamping on the back of the arm of Nakamura. Now heads up to the middle rope. Hideo willing Nakamura back up to his feet. Nice drop kick there by Hideo. Trying to get himself some offense now, taking Nakamura up into a suplex. And Hideo continuing the assault now, dragging Nakamura into the middle of the ring. Boots right in the face of Shinsuke Nakamura. Saito suplex there by Nakamura on Itami, but Itami fighting back with the boots ahead, and it's a very back and forth match this one. Itami sit out power bomb on Nakamura. Wow. Hideo boot across the chest of Nakamura. Hideo now looking for the springboard elbow drop right to the heart of Nakamura. 
Nakamura arm drag taking Hideo down. Hideo struggling as Nakamura catches him right in the side, right in the temple with that knee in the face. Wow. I can knock Hideo straight out that good. Pin there now by Nakamura on Hideo, only for a two count. But how much more has Nakamura, how much more has Hideo got to give? I mean, I'm really struggling with it. I, can't, I don't know what's happened to me. I can't seem to talk. I'm losing the ability for words. Hideo now, DDT on Nakamura. Boot right in the back of the spine. I think it's because this video has gone for quite long. I've been an hour and a half here just sitting uh, doing the commentary. And I think I've, my mind's got a bit boggled now. Maybe I should have had a rest in the middle, but if I do that, then I get tired. Big right hands on the face there of Hidami by Nakamura. Who sends Hidami all the way over the top, crashing to the ground below. As Nakamura follows him out there, referee starts his count as Nakamura sending Hidami right into the barricade. that boots the side of the head and a forearm and another forearm as well. Nakamura really striking Hidami hard. Nakamura putting Atami up against the turnbuckle post. Bam! Slams his head right off that post as well. Nakamura taking no prisoners here. He wants to finish this universe mode off strong, of course. He's a former adrenaline champion. Referee's up to a seven count, is that now? Hideo sending Nakamura back in the ring. Get in the ring yourself, Hideo. Don't play around with this kick. Get in the ring. He does. Thought we might have ended up with no count out there. Hideo bringing Nakamura back up to his feet. Sending Nakamura into the turnbuckle. Boot in the gut there by Hideo. And a hesitation drop kick right in the corner. And Nakamura's busted open. Hideo went for the boot in the back, but Nakamura rolls out the way. So Hideo got planned now, just raking the foot across the face of Nakamura. It's a way to open the wound even further. Talking of which, running knee strike by Hideo Itami on Shinsuke Nakamura. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And Hideo Itami picks him a big victory here. The first time he's main event of the show of SWE. And he comes out on top with a massive victory against Shinsuke Nakamura. What a win that is for Hideo Itami. That's big. I like that. I'm impressed with that by Hideo. Very impressed. Big running knee strike taking Shinsuke Nakamura down. And Nakamura, that's a surprise to me. Hitami has just pinned the former Adrenaline Champion. And of course, like I said, Hitami is going on to Shabby Mania to fight it out for the Intercontinental Championship. And that is the, that, that is really the the momentum he needed. And, and that's 10 ranking points, of course. Doubling a main event, you get your points wise. So it's normally five, gets 10 for his main event. I'm just talking crap now, aren't I? But it's a great win here for Hideo Itami. So Shabby Mania is coming up for you. Adrenaline is going to be on the 2nd of October. Be sure to be there. I'll be there. Well, I'm always here, aren't I? I suppose. It's going to be a great show. I thought we'd give you quite a few of the matches already. Phoenix and Drago versus Mundo and Black for the Tag Team Championships. Uh, Osprey defends against Seidel and Jack Evans in a triple threat. Alexa Bliss defends a belt against Paige. Uh, we've got Okada versus Nakamura versus Shibata. War Machine versus DIY. Tozawa, Ultimo and Vader from, of course, Hydra taking on Angle and American Alpha. We've got Dalton Castle defending his Intercontinental Championship. Currently in a triple threat against Zayn and Hideo. But potentially Joe Ryan after that victory earlier on this evening could push his way in there. Adam Cole versus Roderick Strong. AJ Styles versus Bobby Roode versus Kevin Owens for the Adrenaline Championship as well. It's going to be awesome. And I hope to see you all there. Of course, if you have enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe as always. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon for our last episode of SWE Carnage. Bye. Play by the same, the one to do. 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 Play by the same, the one to do.